Okay, so we're going to look at how we can use Excel to calculate probabilities using the normal distribution. And so we have a couple of problems here. First, we're going to calculate probabilities based on um, the, the information like the observation, the mean and the standard deviation. And then we're going to go backwards and we're going to take a probability that we are being given and we're going to convert that using the mean and standard deviation back to an observation value. So we're going to use Excel to do these calculations. So first, let's set up the problems, and then we'll go do the calculation. So we have Tiffany, again, who scored 630 on her SAT math test, which has a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. But instead of calculating just her standard score, we actually want to know what percentage of the population did as well as she did or less well. So what percentage of the population were at or below her 630 score. This gives us the percentile of her, her test results. So let's go to Excel and do this calculation. So again, we're gonna, I've set up the formula. We just need to enter the values and then use Excel to do our probability calculations. Our observation value is Tiffany's 630. The mean value is 500, and the standard deviation is 100. To calculate the probability of being less than Tiffany's score, we're going to use the norm.dist function. And it's going to give us a reminder of what we need to enter in what order. We're going to enter x is 630. We're going to enter 500 as our mean. 100 as our standard deviation. And whenever we're calculating probabilities, we always want to use cumulative in this case. Um, that when we say false for the cumulative, we use that to create graphs. Um, how high is the distribution? It doesn't calculate probabilities for any continuous distribution that is the case. So we're going to type true here. And then this is going to give us 90%. So this is a pretty good score. She scored better than 90% of other test takers on this test. Good job, Tiffany. Let's go back to our next question. In the next question, we want to know the mean height of women generally is around 64 inches with a standard deviation of approximately three inches. What percentage of women are taller than 60 inches? Now, when you're calculating taller than, norm, the norm dist function can't calculate directly taller than. So what you do instead is you calculate the percentage that is less than, and then you do the complement rule one minus that. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's go back to Excel. So in this case, I'm going to have a little bit of a header over here. This is going to be the probability of x greater than little x. So we're going to calculate the probability less than first, and then we'll calculate the second one. So in this case, the x value is the observation value. That was 60 inches. The mean is 64 inches, that's five foot four. The standard deviation is about three inches. And then our probability to be less than that is norm.dist and our x and our mean and our standard deviation and then true. That's the probability to be less than. So the probability to be greater than is one minus that. Now, of course, you can certainly do this all in one fell swoop, but just to see the steps, I've done it in two. And so um, the number of the problem, the proportion of the population that is taller than someone who is five feet tall is about 91%, because only about 9% of the population is shorter than someone who is a woman who is five feet tall, 60 inches. All right, back to our next question. What percentage of women are taller than 66 inches but shorter than 72 inches? 
So now we want to calculate the probability of being in between two values. And again, there's no there's no direct way to do this. They don't we don't have an option for normal distribution between two values. And these are not multiples of the standard deviation. So we can't use the empirical rule to get an estimate. Um, one standard deviation above 64 would be 67 inches. So this is not a multiple of that. So we are gonna to have to use the normal distribution uh, function, but the way that we're gonna to have to do this is we're gonna calculate the probability of being shorter than the higher value, the 72 inches in this case. And then we're gonna subtract off the probability of being less than 66 inches. So that will give us the, the pieces that we need. Whatever is left will be in between these two values. So we're gonna do two less than calculations and then subtract the larger value minus the smaller value. So let's go back to Excel. All right, so the higher bound, I'm gonna do them in the sort of right to left order as opposed to the left to right order. The higher value is going to be at 72 inches. And we still have our 64 as the mean and three as the standard deviation. And I'm gonna use the formula that I'd previously calculated. I just copy it down. So if you're 72 inches tall for a woman, uh, that's six feet. That's very tall. That's taller than 99.6% of the population. Now, the lower end was 66. Now that's still on the tall side, but not as tall. It's only two inches taller than the mean. And so again, we're gonna cop copy down our norm.dist function. And again, we can see it's using these values we put in these cells. So that's taller than 74%, so almost 75% of the population. So again, still tall, but not as tall. Now, if we want the number of the, prob the probability of being in between these values, we just take the difference. So we're gonna say the difference between the taller end and the smaller end, so what's left is about almost 25% of the population is between 66, which is five foot six, and 72 inches, which is about six feet tall. All right, let's go back to our questions and now try to go the other way. So now we, we've taken our observations and we turn them into probabilities. And what we wanna do now is we wanna take our probabilities and turn them into observations. So here, we're gonna look at the ACT again. A university wants to prioritize admissions for students that score in the top 90% on the ACT, which has a mean of 21 and a standard deviation of five points. How high does a student need to score to get priority admission in this case? Now, one of the things we have to keep in mind when we're doing um, these calculations is even when we're going in the other direction, um, we need to make sure that the probability that we're putting into the formula is the probability of being less than. So um, the top 90% on the SAT is a lot of people. Um, we, wanna, we want students to score in the top 10% on, to, on the ACT to score priority admission. Um, that's sort of a tell. Um, what we actually want is we want to calculate the bottom 90%. So if we're calculating from the bottom, how many, how high does the score have to be before 90% of the people are less than that? That will leave 10% in the top tail. And so when they give you 10% in the, the top 10% or the top 5% or whatever the top end is, you're always going to have to apply the complement rule in order to get back to the probability below. So let's go to our calculation. The probability that is below is our 0.9. And you can also type 90% in here. Excel can handle using percentages. Uh, the mean of our ACT, which is what we're asking about, was 21. 
and the standard deviation was five. Now we can't use the norm.dist function anymore because that's going in the other direction. Instead, we're going to use the norm.inverse function. And again, the probability here is always the probability below the mean and the standard deviation. And here, you do not have to specify cumulative because it's assumed to be cumulative. So that gives you a score of 27.4. So the uh, ACT only gives you integer score values. So um, you could either round up and say you're guaranteed to be in the top 90% if you score 28 or above, or you could round to the nearest whole number. Some people in the top 90% will get rounded down to 27. And so um, 20, if you use 27, that would capture the entire range of the 90th percentile or the top the top 10 percent and if you're an admissions counselor then you would have to decide and then let's go back to our last problem for a woman who is five foot one tall uh, the mean healthy weight is considered to be around 116 pounds with an approximate standard deviation of around eight pounds if we assume these figures are accurate, if you weigh in the bottom 1% of the population, you're considered underweight. What would you have to weigh at this height to be considered underweight? So we wanna find the weight that corresponds to that bottom 1% of the population. So we're gonna go back to Excel. So now we want to put in 1%, and I'm actually just going to write it as a percent just so you can see that this works perfectly well for Excel. We said that the mean was 116 and the standard deviation was 8. And if we go ahead and do that calculation, again, I'll write it out just so we can remind ourselves how it works. The probability goes first, the mean and the standard deviation. Oops. And that would give us about 97 pounds. So according to this calculation, if, you weigh, if you're if uh, you about a, uh, five foot one and you weigh 97 pounds or less, you are considered underweight. That's dangerously unhealthy. Um, people might think you have anorexia. You don't wanna weigh that little. Now, these numbers I should note don't take into account um, like bone structure and other factors and athleticism and things like that. So um, I have known people who were five foot one and weighed about 97 pounds and they seemed perfectly healthy. And I've known people who were five one and who would be absolutely sick if they weighed 97 pounds. So um, this, is, this is sort of an average across all body types and everything. Okay, this is how we calculate probabilities for the normal distribution in Excel or calculating observation values using the normal distribution in Excel.